All right, so what I have here is an argument, and we're going to determine whether or not this argument is valid using a truth table. So the first step is to construct your truth table. And in order to do that, you have to create two reference columns, P and Q, and the reason you have two is because you only have two atomic components. So in this argument, right, the only atomic components there are are P and Q, right? Everything else, every other sentence here, we can build out of those basic atomic components. So P and Q are our basic atomic sentences. So the first thing to do is to assign our truth values to those uh, atomic components, what I call the reference columns. So we're going to do that following this pattern, uh, true, false, true, false, true, true, false, false. Now, so these are the reference columns that I've just set up. And the importance of the reference columns is that it captures every possibility of truth values that P and Q could have. So either P and Q could both be true, or they could both be false, or P could be true while Q, sorry, P could be false while Q is true, or P could be true while Q is false. And those four possibilities are the only four there are, right? Given when we have two atomic uh, sentences, we're going to have four different possibilities, right? If you have three atomic sentences, right, so if you have a P, Q, and R, that's going to lead to an eight-row truth table. If you have four atomic components, that's going to lead to a 16-row truth table. Okay, so the next step is to uh, fill in the uh, columns. So what I have to the right of the reference columns are the two premises. So this is premise one, and this is premise two, and this is the conclusion. So we're going to fill in um, the truth values under the for those premises using uh, the uh, truth functional or propositional connectives. So a conditional is true only when uh, it's in, it, sorry, a conditional is true is in every case except for where the antecedent P is true and the consequent is false. So this will be true, this will be false, it's the only case in which it's false, and these will both be true. So the negation, we're just going to flip the truth values that we have assigned to Q over here. So where Q is true, not Q will be false. Where Q is false, not Q will be true. And the same thing for not P. So we're just going to flip the truth values that we've assigned to the atomic uh, sentence P over here. So where it's true, it's going to be false. And where it's false, it's going to be true. All right, so at this point, we have completed our truth table. Now the question is, how can we use the truth table to determine whether or not the argument is valid? So what we need to look for, and this is the crucial step here, this is what you need to know. What we're looking for is a row on which both of the premises, here, here are the two premises, on which both of the premises are true, and yet the conclusion comes out false. So first row, both of the premises true? No. Second row, are both of the premises true? No. Both of the premises true? No. Both of the premises true? Yes. But in that case, the conclusion is also true, right? So because there's no row where both of the premises are true, and yet the conclusion is false, right? There, we, there were there are only four rows, and on none of those rows were both of the premises true and the conclusion is false. And because of that, the argument is valid. Right? One of the ways of thinking about validity is that it fails the test of invalidity. So when you're looking for invalidity, you're trying to find a case where both the premises are true and yet the conclusion is false. Because we didn't find that, the argument fails to be invalid, which means the argument is valid.